Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and we're looking still, putting our face in the Torah. What an exciting word. What an exciting phrase. And we're still on Psalms 119, and we're looking at verse 143 today. And uh, this is, yes, our 143rd video concerning uh, the study of Psalms 119. And it's been, it's, it's been rich to me, and I hope, again, it has been rich, enriching to you, or um, you've been rich, enriching by it. I think that's the way you say it, right? Enriched. Enriched. There you right. go. You've been enriched by it. Thank God. All right. It says, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet your commandments are my delight. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. There's no way in the world that we can escape the pressure, the constrictions of things that happen in our life because we are living in a world that is fallen. And as long as it is fallen, we have to deal with all the atrocities that come with it. And here we see that uh, the trouble uh, means to be in anguish, but let's look at the word trouble, okay, uh, in the Hebrew, because of course, this whole concept of the whole concept of this verse of scripture is being hard pressed. Now, the word uh, trouble, again, it means a pressing in by someone or something. And is one who closes in with pressure, such as a straight or a narrow, tight place or situation by an enemy, an adversary. And it talks about a flint. A flint is a very hard rock, such as uh, when God told Joshua to, to take flint, make flint knives and circumcise all the men at his times, and boy, that was a hard one. There had to be at least 600,000 men. That took time. He would not give them, God would not give them Jericho until they were circumcised because they had not circumcised the people on the way, meaning that when they came out of Egypt, they were going into the promised land, and God uh, told Moses, and Moses sent spies out to the promised land to spy it out. He sent 12 men, but 10 came back with a negative report, and only Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. But the people chose to believe the 10 over the 2. And because of this, God's anger kindled against them, and he had them in the desert, stay in the desert, in view of the promised land for 40 years. But instead of saying, we have failed, so let's take our children and still keep the covenant of circumcision. And let me tell you something. God made this covenant of circumcision with Abraham in chapter 17 of Genesis. And instead of keeping that covenant, they became lax and they said, well, what's the use? Well, it came the time when God wanted to give them Jericho and move on to the promised land. And all these men would not circumcise. And so God told Joshua to make flint knives for he, for himself, and for the elders and all those who were leaders to circumcise the men. And that was a hard thing. And so what happens is that when we fail in life, when we fail even walking in the way of righteousness, we have to be ready but continue to hold on to those things which are holy because God will rise up again for you to take you on to what you need to do. Sometimes he'll have us wander because we've, we've been disobedient. That happens, folks. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. But if you're not, you will have the sword of judgment. And that, work, that works both for, for, for the righteous as well as the unrighteous. Well, it talks about a narrow and tight place. So the trouble, excuse me, the letters of trouble, and let me just go to, and it's, it's sa, sa. The Hebrew word is sa, and there's, there's two letters. And actually it represents, the first letter is righteous, watch this. And the second letter is resh, which means leadership. And you say, but how can this trouble be righteous or leading us into righteousness is because God has a way of tightening us up to keep us righteous and to keep us on the way that is everlasting. 
You see, let, let, let's go on and look at the word anguish also, because I'm going to put this together. The word anguish means to be pressed also, okay, to be pressed into a tight place, to be distressed, to be sore and oppressed. And now let's look at the letters of, the, of, the, 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 of this word, which is masak, matsak, and it means, watch this, it means a, 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 a waters that are powerful that move. And I don't know about you, but I've gotten into some streams sometimes, and little tight, you know, little streams, and you can still feel the pressure of the water. Can you imagine the pressure of Niagara Falls? Can you imagine how much pressure is coming down upon those rocks? And so here is a water that is very tight, but watch this. We have this sari, which we've been studying, the letter of righteousness, and it means a powerful flow of righteousness and the Vav is connected to his holiness. You say, well, wait a minute. How is a affliction and anguish connected with a flow of righteousness? And that brings us to holiness. Because the Bible tells us that God allows us to go through, uh, to, through uh, uh, hard times in order to bring us to a place where we can learn his obedience. Now watch this now. This is very interesting. In Genesis chapter 26, we have the story of Isaac, um, of Isaac who um, there was a famine in the, line, in the land. And so the famine, because of this famine, he was on his way to Egypt. And, uh, and so the Bible says that here in chapter 26 of Genesis, verse 2, And Jehovah, Yahweh, appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, live in the land which I shall tell you, reside in this land and I will be with you and bless you for to you and to your seed I will give all these lands and I will establish the oath which I swore to Abraham your father and I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven or the heavens and will give to your seed all these lands. Watch this. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Watch this now. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Uh, there was nothing written for Abraham. <laughs> it, was, it was in the time of Moses that that. Moses wrote down all the commandments and the statutes and the law. What is he talking about here? It's because Abraham had in his heart the written word of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter, um, chapter 8 verse 10, and in the last days, I will, this is what I will do. I will put my laws into their minds and graphite them into their hearts. That's why this word has to be in your mind and in your heart. And what's beautiful about it is that as you read the word of God and it goes into your mind, into your eyes, the Bible says the entrance of thy word gives light. And so as you read the word of God, it gives light to your soul. It gives light so that you can see where you're going. And a lot of people stop reading this. I mean, Christians, I say, How, do you read the word of God? Yes, yeah, sometime. So some say, I, I don't really read it at all. And I say, well, how, how, you know, I have to tell them, you must be a very strong person to live the way you do and not depend on the word of God. Me, I am weak. I am a weak man. And therefore, I depend upon the scriptures for strength. I depend upon the scriptures for wisdom. And so here he says, because your father obeyed my voice. And that is the key to success. But understand that in, in, in watch this, in obeying God's voice, there is pressure. And you say, where, how, how can it be pressure? Well, let me show you where the pressure is, okay? It says here in Matthew that Jesus said, chapter 7, verse 14, because narrow is the gate and constricted is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Now, another translation says, but, but because straight is the gate and narrow. Now, there seems to be, uh, a, a, well, not a conflict of words, God forbid, but an understanding of these words that it says that straight is the gate. Now, straight is an interesting word, and I want us to look at this real quick. 
Now, straight, um, when you look at the word straight, it means to put into a difficult situation. It means to, listen, especially financial ones. It means to restrict in range. It means to extend, watch this, um, to make something narrow with limits. So there are times, watch this, because you're walking in righteousness, you're going to come to times when you're restricted and constricted. How? Because people don't want to hear what you have to say. The enemy will press you in. I mean, here you are in your job and you um, are sharing the word of God and you think that people will be happy, especially if they knew that the reason that they're blessed is because you're there, but instead they, they mistreat you, they talk about you, they put limits on you, they want to do bad things to you because you are righteous, because you are walking in righteousness and therefore the road to, to the righteousness is somewhat affliction and tribulation. Now, let's look at these words because it's very important. When it says that, he says, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me. Well, why? It wasn't because he was a sinner. It was because he was holding on to the word of God. It was because he was walking in the way that he should walk that he says, trouble and anguish have taken hold of me. So here we see the straight gate, and let's look at it in the Greek because the word is stenos, and it simply means something, watch this, obstacles standing close about. And it's interesting how sometimes when we're going through trouble, it's because people have put things close to us and we are surrounded by the enemy. That happens, folks. That happened in the time of Elijah. His servant, they were, they were riding together, and the servant saw the enemy surrounded all around. They said, we're surrounded by the enemy. And the prophet is, is at ease. He's taking it easy. And he says a prayer for the servant. He said, Lord, open your servant's eyes. <laughs> and when he did, he saw the enemy surrounding them, but he saw angels of God surrounding the enemy. Wow. The Bible tells us that God surrounds, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God surrounds his people. So no matter what's going on in your life, you stay righteous, you keep walking the walk of righteousness, and stay in the presence of God's word and his, and his love and his mercy, and watch what God will do for you, even when people come against you. So straight is the gate now, remember that gates don't move, but we move toward the gate. So we have to move on. So the word narrow here means, watch this, it means trouble and affliction. It means tribulation. As a matter of fact, the, the word in the Greek for narrow is the word tilibo, which we get tribulation. Narrow. It means affliction. It means to be thronged. Remember when, when they were pressing in Jesus because they wanted to touch him? Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a serious situation. Sometimes I see people coming out of court and people would want to just squeeze those, those people who are coming out of court just trying to get an answer from them, but they need bodyguards to push the throng back. They need, they need people to push them back. And I want to let you know that no matter what you're going through, when the enemy is coming in, like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against him. For no weapon formed formed against you shall prosper. Watch this now. And you shall condemn. Why? Because you are righteous. As a matter of fact, let's go to that scripture. I, I want to see that scripture with my eyes. And we're going to go here to uh, Isaiah 54 in the last verse. It says, no weapon. No, you know what? I'm going to go back I'm just a little bit. Watch this now. Behold, they shall surely gather together, not by me. He says, they're going to come against you, but understand, it is not me. Whoever shall gather against you, he shall fall by you. Watch this. Behold, I have created the, the smith to blow the coals in the fire and who brings out a tool for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, watch, watch this. In you, watch it, that comes against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. This is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Watch this. 
of the of of, of Jehovah, and their righteousness is of me, say of Yahweh. So we watch this now. Sometimes things come against us, and we rebuke it. Which I we could get into the word rebuke later on. We come against it. We speak against it. Says, but nothing is happening. Check yourself. Maybe there's an area in your life that you have given room to the enemy by law to him for him to come against you. Jesus talked about those who are workers of lawlessness. And folks, sometimes we give room to the enemy because we're not walking right. And so it's important that we, we, we be careful. My wife, uh, this morning, she gave me a picture. She, she, put a, she put her head, her hands on her head like this. And she said, I'm pressed on every side. I'm, what was this word you said? Uh, uh, trouble and anguish. <laughs> Something you can't forget, right? Like something takes hold of you and presses you in. I don't know about you, but I have gone through many of those pressings. And you know, especially sometimes you feel like you're going to lose your mind when you're going through the fire. But I got news for you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound, well-balanced, healed, moderate, saved, whole mind. Hallelujah to that. But God here and Isaiah says, he created the blacksmith. Wait a minute. The, re the reason that the weapon will fail is because when, he, when the enemy points his weapon on you, it'll backfire. <laughs> God, God allowed the blacksmith to create a weapon to bring you down, to destroy you, but it will not. It only shows the enemy is weak and God does whatever he wants. Hallelujah. And so Isaac went down to Egypt, going back to Isaac. And what happened was this. He was, God promised him that he would be with him, that he would bless him, but he has struggles. As a matter of fact, the men of, 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 of Egypt began to inquire about his wife, and he says, she is my sister. The Bible says because he feared that they would kill him. Uh, I think his father did that too. They didn't tell the truth, not the whole truth. Remember, a half a truth is still a whole lie. A half a truth is still a whole lie. And so God was with him. And they struggled over wells. I mean, it was incredible stuff that he went through. He was hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. He was hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Now watch this. It wasn't until the Lord appeared to him and at this point, Isaac builds an altar and worships the Lord where he was. And it was when he did this that God delivered him. And let me tell you the way out of constriction, the way out from trouble and anguish is to bow your face before God and worship him. When he worshiped God, God began, watch this, God began to show him because all the wells that he, that his father dug up were closed and he was fighting over these wells. But when he sacrificed unto the Lord and he opened the last well, he said this, this well, he called it, the Lord has made room for us. That was his well. And sometimes we're looking for the way out. We're looking, God, where is my well? He says, worship me. Seek my face. Now, let's see what the psalmist says here. I love it. He says here, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me. Now, what does it mean to take hold on me? The picture is that of water and of a side. And when you put it, these pictures together, it means mighty sides. When one strengthens the sides, internal pressure is forced on the sides of the upper body. You know, if someone grabs your stomach and they begin to press you in, all the pressure goes up. And so he says, something has taken hold of me and the pressure has come up to me. Very uncomfortable feeling. Masa, matsa. And it means to find, to attain, to secure. Something has taken a hold of me and it's secured me. I can't move. I can't do anything. But watch this. The three letters represents the waters that are righteous and strong. And you say, wait a minute. How does that work? Because it was God bringing the persecution, God allowing the trouble to take hold of him. Watch this. But it was God taking hold of him. 
It was God bringing him to righteousness. It was God teaching him that he is the strong one, that he is the leader, that he is the one who is Yahweh, the one who is the creator of all the earth. He says, I'm going to teach you something. Because why? Because I have allotment for you. And what he says, he says, trouble and anguish has taken hold on me. And yet, watch this, yet thy commandments, your mitzvah, the wisdom of the codes of the Torah, See, God has given the Torah for wisdom. That's why, listen, when, when Solomon became king, what did he say? He said, when the Lord said in the dream, whatever you want, I'll give you. And he says, give me wisdom to lead these people. He says, because you didn't ask for riches or even to triumph over your enemies, I'm going to give you wisdom. And God gave him triumph over his enemies. People from all over the world came to hear Solomon because he had the codes of wisdom. Oh man, let me tell you something about the codes of wisdom. This book is written in such a way that when you read it and you study study it, the codes will be written on your mind. And he says, and they are my delight. Hallelujah. The delight of the shepherd was this, to keep watch over the, sh the sheep from the destroyer. So, so let's look at the word real quick. And it's Sha Shua. Hmm. Almost means like Yeshua. Enjoyment, delight. There was a double pressure here and there's a double I. Meaning that you can see and you can understand that God has placed you in a, in a coral that protects you. And he says, delight in that. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spiritual day. And remember that when trouble and anguish takes hold upon you, delight in his commandments and he will rescue you. God bless.